This week's video is brought to you by HelloFresh Canada. Stay tuned to later in the video for all the details. I'm on my way now. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. If you happen to be new around here, my name is Trevor and this is Anna. We are the Delightful Travelers. Make sure to hit subscribe and click on that little bell to follow along on our adventures. So we put out a call out on Facebook, on Instagram, on our community tab for you guys to ask us all your questions about Nova Scotia. We've done our best. We've put together a list of questions and we're going to answer them today. So we're obviously filming this during the pandemic. Halifax is currently in lockdown, but it should be over soon. Fingers crossed. We are not encouraging anyone to break lockdown not follow the rules, anything like that, but you can at least start planning a trip or a move to Nova Scotia, making some notes, that kind of thing. Also, a lot of people will presumably be watching this long after the pandemic. And you sent us so many questions. We're gonna do our best to get to the majority of them, but if we don't answer your questions, apologies. All right, first question, as we said, we have a lot of them. We're going to read it off our phone just because it's the only way we can do it. Here we go. Where should I go if it's the first time visiting Nova Scotia? Tough one. So let's say you have about a week or two weeks, which is typically what most people have. You're going to be in Halifax no matter what, so you're going to see the city. Yeah, then spend it, a couple days here for sure. Absolutely, this city is amazing. Then it comes down to what you're into. If you're really into nature, go to Cape Breton, do the Cabot Trail, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Annapolis Valley is fantastic with yes. the wineries, that kind of thing. Those are probably our top three. Um, so Shore is beautiful, nice beaches, yeah. beautiful towns. The Eastern Shore, you yeah. really can't go wrong. No, <laughs> I would, but definitely highlight, the highlight is Cape Breton. Like the Cabot Trail is out of this world. There's, there's nothing like it. It's an absolute beauty of a day. You cannot beat Halifax when the weather is great. I will tell you that. We're just out for a quick walk, but we have more questions. We're gonna jump around locations today. Yeah. But uh, what do we got next? One sec, I'm locking my phone, okay. I'm planning a four-day trip to Nova Scotia. What would you recommend is a must-do? So it's kind of a sort Quick of trip. a similar, similar question to the last one, except obviously this we have limited time here in Nova Scotia. Yeah. Four days. Come to Halifax for sure. Yes. It's lovely city, as we've mentioned. I think times. you could also tack on the valley. So Wolfville specifically is an amazing town. It's it's about an hour away. Yeah. So, so it's an easy day trip. You yes. can go do some wineries, or you could stay the night there. There's some beautiful inns and that kind and of thing. And if you didn't know it. We have some amazing wine down in the valley. Yeah, and last I would say a beach day would be a yes. lot of fun. There's lots in and around Halifax, mm -hmm. so sure. That kind of thing. Yeah, up on the eastern shore uh, specifically, there's a couple beautiful beaches and they're very close to the city. All right, we have another question. Let's see what it is. So it is the best area in Nova Scotia to live. <laughs> well, that's a loaded question and that will obviously vary depending on who you are and what your needs exactly. are. Exactly, everybody has different opinions on what they love. Some people are city people, some people are country people, some are small town people, so it depends on so much. Do you need a job? <laughs> yeah. Or do you work for yourself? Or you're retired? So, so many things that it depends on. So yeah. obviously Halifax is amazing. It's our one of our favorite cities. We live here, we love mm -hmm. it. We've done many many videos on it. There's um, another city, uh, Sydney, if you didn't know, but it's much smaller. There's lots of big towns in Nova Scotia as well. And what I mean by that, like 10,000 plus people with you know if grocery stores and pretty much lots everything of amenities, you need. everything you need yeah. into you know there's Truro, there's Bridgewater towns like that. Yeah but then there's also some really really cute towns that we'll probably get into later because I think that was one of the questions but Will Phil is one of them you already heard us uh, mention that and there are a few other gems I would call gems about four or five of them here in the province. So we did not come prepared today. <clears throat> we left home without eating lunch but we're very close to home. We're gonna head back there. We know that you guys love it when we eat food and when we cook food, so uh, we'll do that. <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna eat and still answer the questions. We really didn't plan this out very well. There's not a lot in this fridge here. I'm gonna have to see if Anna can come up with something because I don't know what to do. Why is there someone at our door? <laughs> can you get that? Uh, yeah. No one ever knocks it. on our door. Don't know what to do. Well, this is good timing. It's our HelloFresh box, which also happens to be this week's video sponsor. Let's get this open. I don't even remember what we ordered, but we can make some lunch today. It's time to refresh your dinner rotation with high quality seasonal ingredients delivered directly to you. HelloFresh has a flexible meal plan without the hassle. You can pick from over 25 meals each week. There are such great options that the hardest part for us was narrowing it down. All right, so what did we actually get? I hardly even remember, <laughs> but I know I was excited. Cantonese noodles. That sounds good. Moroccan spiced chicken. Yum. <laughs> and sriracha turkey burgers. 
And by the way, all the directions, easy directions, are right on the back of the card. And to make it even easier, you can manage all your meal planning with the HelloFresh app. You can pick your meals up to a month in advance, skip deliveries if you're out of town, or change your delivery day and address, so you only order what and when you want. No commitments. New on the menu, Smart Meals. Making smart choices just got easier with both Carb Smart and Calorie Smart recipes. It couldn't be easier. HelloFresh does the planning, prep, and delivery. You enjoy the freedom of knowing your nutrition goals are always achievable. The best part, our fellow Canadians get six free meals and free shipping with our promo code. You can find that code and the link in the description below. A big thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Now let's have some lunch. Well, check this out. Look how colorful, smells insanely good. Can't wait to eat this. Yeah, so we figured it's a good time to answer more questions. And since you guys send us lots of food questions while we eat, why don't we answer those ones? So first food question, how are the lobsters there? <laughs> Trevor can answer this one because I don't eat seafood. <laughs> yeah, both of us don't eat um, a lot of lobster. I do a little bit. I love me a lobster sandwich. I think the correct answer is cold water lobster. You can't beat it. You can't beat it from the Atlantic Ocean. Everybody says that. So I can confirm our, our lobster here is top notch. It's delicious. All right, next question. What's your favorite Donair place? Also, apologies if it's extra loud. It seems every <laughs> time we sit down to do a video and eat, the jackhammering starts next door. So, so favorite Donair. So she doesn't eat Donair. I've never had a Donair in my I life. To eat donair. But it's been a while. It's by that, it's kind of like poutine in Canada. I don't eat it very often, maybe once a year. I'd say probably once every two years. And I think a lot of people think of it as like late night yeah. drunk food. Late after, night. after the pubs type place. Comfy drunk food. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, I, I know I, I'll mention King of, King of Donair is a good one. Um, all those places on Pizza Corner in Halifax, they're all pretty, pretty good, I would mm -hmm. say. I can really only speak to Halifax because we live here. Uh, so if anyone does have a favorite Donair place in Nova Scotia, leave a comment below um, for others. I also hear that Tony's Donair is a good, um, a good one as well, right here in kind of central Halifax. Must try places to eat. So this is a really hard one. Nova Scotia's food scene is top notch, honestly. Yeah. So I think we're not going to talk necessarily about our favorite restaurants, mm -hmm. but maybe places that have some scenic things, some interesting things about them that that you should visit for. Yeah. Um, last year, our number one probably favorite place that we went to for the first time was a place called La Brie in Shetty yeah. Camp in Cape Breton. It was unbelievable. So I'll try to paint the setting for you. It's in this kind of old house. It's overlooking the ocean on the west coast of Nova Scotia. So you don't see anything but the horizon line. And of course the sun setting over there and it was just a perfect evening that we had. And Dinner the, was awesome. the food was so good. Some other highlights. There's a, a Celtic Lodge in Cape Breton. Just again, we're combining the setting and the food. The food is delicious and the setting is just really neat. It, like yeah, it's, it's on the old, other side of Cape Breton. Very old historic hotel. So it's cool to, mm -hmm. cool to visit, beautiful spot. Um, what was in the Down in the valley. Oh, yeah. So we have a place uh, that is a brewery in a church right in town. You don't even need to drive. And they do serve <laughs> food as well. They have really good food. So it's just, it's neat to sit at a church, like in a church or outside the church, mm -hmm. have a craft beer and just have some delicious pub food, like high end pub food. Yeah, it's a good spot. Um, here in Halifax, I would say if you're visiting for the first time, um, the Press Gang is a really, really unique restaurant. And it's a it's a fine dining restaurant, but it's in a very, very historic building. So it's just yeah. cool to be inside of. Yeah, it's very cool. It's like old Halifax. Those are just a few. Uh, again, our food scene here is incredible. But oh, I have one more. Oh, you do? One more before you keep going. Uh, if you're coming in the summer, Salt Yard is oh, yes. just like an outdoor kind of dining area. There's just lots of like different kiosks, kind of like mm -hmm. street food street style food. type thing, but it's a good place to visit. If you don't know what you want, you want to have a bunch of different options and you can eat outside. The next question we were asked is what are the best breweries in Nova Scotia? That's a tough one to answer. I don't even know what the number is now. I bet There's you it's so in the many. hundreds of craft breweries or craft beer scene here is impeccable. I'd put it up against any in the world. Now, favorites, I feel like I like something from each one. But yeah, I think one of our favorites right now is Nine Locks. Nine Locks definitely is a is a good one. They just, there's a solid uh, lineup of beers. Mm -hmm. Big Spruce, mm -hmm. Tatamagush Brewery. Uh, any other standards? Well, like church, if you're going to visit breweries, like we said mm -hmm. from the last question, church brewing is a beautiful spot. Mm -hmm. Two Crows, Two Crows Brewing. Those are just a few. There's, there's so many. There's lots of little smaller ones as well in, in some um, towns in Nova Scotia, like Tanner Brewing down in Chester. We mm -hmm. love that. Also in Parsboro, uh, there is five, is it called Five Islands? I think it's called Five Islands Brewing. Could be wrong on that. 
now I forget, but it's also just a small town. It's the only brewery there. But if you get a chance, go check it out. Next question, are there good veggie and or vegan restaurants? Mm -hmm. That's a definite yes. There's some really good spots, especially in the last couple of years, I feel like some stuff has really opened up. Yeah, more in the city. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I say the city, I mean Halifax, not uh, Sydney. I mean, there would be some vegetarian restaurants there, but here, here in Halifax, you have a lot of options. So one of our favorites is a place called On V. It's a vegan restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Probably the best known vegan restaurant in the city. Yep. Um, just up the road, there's like um, a place called Copper Branch that's very close to where we live. I think that's a chain. So it, you might just find other places. Right. That, um, some other ones though, in the North End, there's Spring House. Is that what it's Spring called? House is one. There's also Wild Leak. Mm -hmm. uh, on what is that on Windsor Street, I believe. Yeah, and next, actually, next to Spring House, I totally forget the name of it, but there's a uh, yeah. vegan butcher. A vegan butcher, <laughs> that's pretty neat. So, and also not just so there are restaurants that are dedicated to like veg vegetarians and vegans, but a lot of restaurants just offer yeah. have options. So. I'd say it's rare to go in a restaurant and then not have yeah. an option. All right, next question. Someone likes their coffee. Are there any great specialty coffee places in Nova Scotia? Yes, there are. Plenty of them. Loads. <laughs> Too many to name. If you're into coffee, you're a coffee lover, don't even worry about not having that here. Um, again, especially in the cities, uh, Halifax has so many good coffee shops. Like I, they're all they're all over the place. All over the place. And I find most of the towns. Once you get to the towns, there's usually like a local cafe in each town, give or take. Mm -hmm. In between all the towns, you usually find your Tim Hortons. What is your favorite Indian cuisine? Mm. There are a few places we haven't tried yet, but our go-to place is one that's here downtown. It's called Rasa. Mm -hmm. It's very, very good. So definitely the best that we've ever tried. For Raza, yeah, for sure, in Halifax. Now, honestly, I find it's the one cuisine that is somewhat lacking in the city. We, mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of good options. It's coming along. We get asked this question, though, all the time. <laughs> funny enough, we talked to an Uber driver that was originally from India a couple months ago before mm -hmm. the lockdown when we were taking Ubers and that oh, kind of yeah. thing, and he said, Indian food here isn't bad, but it's really, really expensive. Expensive, yeah. Well, Halifax can be expensive. I think it's very promising with Raza because it's really good, but I have a hunch there's going to be quite a few more Indian restaurants popping up in the next couple of years. What are your top two Dartmouth restaurants? I don't spend nearly enough time in Dartmouth, so. Mm -hmm. I would, I mean, this would be downtown Dartmouth. Uh, I would say, Battery Park, mm -hmm. which is like a tap room, but they do serve their own um, delicious food. Ace Burger is there, best we burger did a video in there the city. A couple months ago. Yeah, that has that's the best burger I would say. And there's also a restaurant called the Canteen. Yeah, the Canteen is right downtown Dartmouth. It's a quick ferry ride from uh, Halifax over to the other side, and then you can just walk to the Canteen. Those I think are our top two mm -hmm. on that side. All right, our very last food question is, are there any good chocolate places? Someone has a sweet tooth, I see. Huh, well, there is. There's a couple here in Halifax, uh, one that's very near to us that we really enjoy, and that's mm -hmm. good coffee as well, is called Russo Chocolatier. Chocolatier, that is one of our favorite. They make their own chocolate, it's so good. I think they even have my favorite lattes maybe yeah. in the city, but yeah. their chocolate is, oh my. Yes, but there's also a place we should probably do a video on or like talk about them at some point because it's a really unique story. There's a place called Peace by Chocolate. I think mm -hmm. they started in Antigonish, but they just yep. opened a store here in Halifax. Uh, tried the chocolate only once, so we really need to do it, but it's a very, very unique, awesome Canadian story. So yep. we'll talk about that sometime in the future. All right, we've changed up the environment. We're out for another walk, trying to get a bit of exercise, but we still have lots more questions. Loads Let's more questions. This them. is going to be a long video, I think. <laughs> So we tried to theme things up last, we did food. Now we're gonna talk about beaches. You guys beaches. have a lot of questions about beaches. Like you people. <laughs> Which is the best beach near Halifax? Best beach near Halifax. Uh, I think my favorite, probably our favorite, I would say Conrad's mm -hmm. Beach. It's near Lawrencetown, so mm -hmm. we did a video there before. We took a walk on Morristown Beach on a very, very cold day. Yeah. But Conrad's in the summertime is really The perfection. reasons why, I mean, there's lots of beaches that are close to Halifax. The only downside about Conrad's is there's no uh, washrooms or bathrooms. So yeah, if you need to do your business, the ocean is there for you. <laughs> but the beach itself is all sand and it's just really long and it's not rocky. And it never feels overly crowded either. No, it's one of our favorites. Next beach question, uh, best beaches in the province? Well, <laughs> I forget the number of total beaches that we have, but there are, are so many, hundreds of beaches. We have uh, not been to all of them. 
but no. not nearly, not even by a long shot. Yeah. So uh, our favorite beach that we found last summer was Chimney Corner. Yeah, that's in Cape Amazing. Breton. Again, Conrad's Beach. Uh, I know a lot of people like Rizzers. Mm -hmm. Carter's a, Beach. Carter, there's a beach called Carter's Beach on the South Shore. We've never been there. We've been yeah. trying to get there. It just hasn't worked out, but it's supposed to look absolutely stunning, but the water's freezing. Speaking of cold water, the next question, is the ocean water cold at beaches around Halifax? What about the air? This person says they grew up around St. John and the Bay of Fundy was so cold. The Bay of Fundy is absolutely oh. freezing. Ice cold, Bay yeah. of Fundy is. The, the beaches around here are not as cold, but they can be pretty chilly. <laughs> Depends on the beach, oddly enough. You'd think in this general vicinity it would be the same but it's not like no crystal crescent is a gorgeous beach the water there always freezing freezing cold I, I mean like sometimes it's 18 degrees even lower if you're coming I think if you grew up in Canada or the east coast of Canada like in the Atlantic provinces you'd be used to it you'd say it's cold but you could deal with it if you're coming from another country that is like hot weather country Brazil Philippines Caribbean. India Caribbean you would say this water's freezing cold yes. but it can get there's actually a website you can go to i can't remember what it is but it's a lifeguard website they update it every day yeah. some of the beaches get the water gets up to like in the 20s low 20s yeah. best time though is around september if you can hook a nice warm summer or end day, of august, or, yeah. or end of august but in september if you get them the water is just the yeah. warmest then all right what do we uh, what do we have next okay, we have one more beach question clearly you guys are really uh, concerned about the temperature of the water any warm beach is relatively between lunenburg and halifax yeah, I'd say the water yeah. there is somewhat warmer than other places. Like Queensland's not too bad. What's mm -hmm. the one Queen that Queensland's a popular the one, one that we've gone to that you have to pay to get? Oh yeah, Hubbard's um, Hubbard's Beach. It's on a campground, and you have to pay to go there. I feel it's like it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't that much. But yeah, the water there is quite quite warm, warm, warmer than um, other places like Crystal Crescent. Yeah. <laughs> All right, do you have any more? Yes, I have loads more, still lots more. <laughs> I right. grouped these ones into the best of Nova Scotia. You had lots of best of questions. Okay. Starting with where are the best cottage towns on the ocean with cool restaurants, breweries, shops, etc. So many. Wow, that's that's actually a tough one <laughs> to answer. Uh, in general, Nova Scotia has a lot of lakes, mm -hmm. <laughs> and because of that, there's a lot of cottages. So. So no, a lot of cottages, yeah, aren't necessarily in a town, but they might be near a town. Yeah, or that kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. But now, if we can think of some some of the ones we know, and if we're trying to think like that's close to a town that has some amenities, or the town's interesting, like Tatamagush, mm -hmm. I would say, is yeah. a place. Um, just one of our favorite breweries are there. We mentioned before. It's a cool, cute little town. Lots yeah, of the North stuff Shore is, there. is cool. Carsboro, we kind of mentioned that before. It also has a brewery there. My dad has a cottage. Yeah, well, we, that one there. we can speak to because yeah. there's a cottage in the family there. Yeah. But Carsboro now has some things in town that are interesting, like the brewery, back to beer. Yeah. <laughs> but there are some cute little shops, and it's just a neat area just being on the whole Bay of Fundy. Another one in Cape Breton that we really like is Inverness. It's oh, really yeah. Up, I guess up and coming town. I'd say up and coming town, and, and I would call it Nova Scotia's true beach town. I mean, it's just miles beach. or kilometers and kilometers of beaches and there's quite a bit there and just there's outside also a there's a brewery lakes. there if you notice the theme happening the theme is we follow <laughs> the breweries to the cottages guys yes. <laughs> sticking with the town theme this question is best underrated or, or undiscovered towns undiscovered underrated towns so this would be uh, i would say hidden gems yeah uh it is a tough one like this is a village but Bear River comes to mind yeah, way down really in the valley cool, cool little spot. Yeah, there's just lots of like it's an artsy little village there's some mm -hmm. cool things there's a winery yeah any others Annapolis Royal maybe not that un undiscovered but it's a great little town and maybe not as popular as some other ones but lots of great yeah. restaurants but I think that's good to know not every tourist I don't think goes to Annapolis Royal because it is a little further down in the valley. Most people go to Wolf Hill. But very close back. to Bear River, only like 20 yeah. minutes from there. Again, Inverness is Inverness, another one man. that I feel like not everybody goes to, but it's nope. a great spot. Most people, well, not all, but a lot of people go to the other side to Inganish in, um, in Cape Breton. But I would say that Inverness, in my opinion, I just like it better. I think we both like it better. Love it. And I just want to also say, we have not been everywhere in Nova Scotia. No. <laughs> We're by no means 100% experts. We really we're from here, but we uh, travel most of the time. So we've been here the past year, but a lot of it's locked down. Yeah. So if we were like, why didn't you mention this town? It's me because we've never been there. <laughs> so also, if you know of a place, leave it below in the comments for other people. Okay, next question is, uh, what are the best campgrounds in Nova Scotia? So we're not big campers in general. No. <laughs> so we can't really, really answer this question, but we can tell you that the national parks, there's two of them, are amazing yep. and probably the best camping. Someone else can definitely leave a comment and let you know, but national parks for sure, just look those up. Whew, if you uh, do come to Halifax at some point, 
be ready for the hills. The whole city's on a hill, hill. and I am out of breath right now. Every time. <laughs> All right. Every time. All right. Another Up question. next, what are the best small towns, unique shops, farmers markets, bars, etc.? Small town. So, yeah, we kind of mentioned this before in the video. There's lots of towns in general, but in our opinion, like small, cute towns. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Well, we already mentioned Annapolis Royal. It's fantastic. Wolfville, Lunenburg, Mahone Bay. Yeah. What am I missing? The deck. <laughs> so you said Lunenburg. Yeah. We said Wolfville. Yeah. We said Inverness, the deck, Annapolis Royal. I think we got them all. I'm sure there's others. Again, leave comments for the ones we missed. Yeah, and the reason we're naming those again is it's the towns are interesting, uh, and there's lots of just art and lots of things to do in each one. They're just cute and historic. All right, the next question we were asked are, what are the best golf courses? Yeah, I guess best golfing in Nova Scotia. We're honestly, I'm sorry, the wrong people to ask. Last summer we did go to Cabot Links and Cabot Cliffs for some of the top rated golf courses in the entire world. Absolutely stunning. Other than that, sorry, Fox out of breath. Harbor. Fox Harbor, yeah. yeah. I don't know, again, people leave comments and help out, help out these people. All right, next up, where in Nova Scotia gets the least amount of snow? I would say right here in Halifax and the South Shore. It's a little bit of both. I don't know if it's just because we're more south in the province and we're close to the ocean, but that ocean does keep us kind of warm sometimes. We had a mild winter this year. Love it. All right, next up, what is the weather like here in Halifax? Is it humid? Is it difficult to walk around? I assume, I assume by walk around you mean in the winter, or like, is it not icy because it's hilly? I'm not quite sure, but they do a good job of salting uh, everything, I would say. Humidity, yes. So in the summer, when it's starting to get warmer, even in the spring, it can get quite humid. And if you're not used to that, just be ready for it. It is a thing. So do you guys remember this place from one of our other videos? <laughs> yeah, we did a moving to Halifax video. A lot of people watched it. Hopefully a lot of you guys are watching this video as well because I think it will be helpful. And the next group of questions are all kind of logistical questions that people asked us that are really related to moving here and some things that you should know. Take a look, there's no one in here. In normal times, non-COVID times, this is usually a very busy spot with tourists. Uh, Anna's back here getting another question. What do you got for us? All right, this one. How long does it take to get a doctor? If you oh. can't get one, is it easy to use walk-in clinics? So I think I read the other day that there's about 60,000 people on a waiting list for family uh, for a family doctor. So honestly, I have no idea how long it takes. Every once in a while, you see someone post something about a doctor taking in new patients, but it's really yeah. difficult. I, I think it's safe to say it does take long in general. Um, yeah, that's it's one thing I hope I really hope it improves. Mm -hmm. But you can get into walk-in clinics quite fast. At least in the city. In I the can't, city. can't speak for small towns. I don't know if they have them or not. But mm -hmm. in Halifax and around surrounding areas, there's quite a few walk-in clinics. I hear they can you can wait an hour or two depending on how busy it is. Yep. But yeah, go get in. Any idea how hard it is to purchase land and build a tiny house on? Like specifically a tiny house. We know there's some kind of odd rules around those. Just oh, I think you can research. just, I don't think purchasing land is overly complicated. No. But I think uh, each municipality has its own rules for tiny homes. Some are easier and some are not so easy to do. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know the difference between all the, you know, where it's the easiest. I'm not One really thing sure. we do know is you have, if you want power, if you want it to be on grid, it has to be in like a freestanding building, like a shed. And that's if your <laughs> tiny house is on wheels. On so wheels. When your tiny house is on wheels, I think it totally changes things because it's treated like an RV. There's some uh, on Facebook, I believe, there's some tiny home groups uh, on Nova Scotia. I think that, that those groups would have all that information. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's completely easy. I just think there's some hoops you have to jump through. Next up, is Halifax safe to raise a family? Say Halifax is a very, very safe city. Please don't listen to the people that say it's a dangerous city. <laughs> There'll probably be like people commenting in this always video. Always negative people. Any of the crimes we ever hear about here are always criminal related like they're Always. retaliation or pe drug related like, drug related i've never heard of anyone just randomly getting no shot to or, us it yeah. feels completely safe to walk around and do whatever you want of course just like any city in the world or any town there's bad pockets and you know you'll end up knowing what those are but yeah. in general no i mean this is a safe city as of this week how much is a liter of gas we don't have a car so honestly no. i had no idea i just had to look it up it's about a dollar 30 per liter yeah dollar 30 i don't know you tell us if that's too low or too high speaking of costs of things i think this is the one price that we didn't include in our halifax cost of living video if you want to check that out we go into detail about specific costs like down to your power bill your water bill some groceries we'll make sure to leave a link for that and definitely check it out if you're interested 
All right, some more cost things. Somebody asked, uh, what is property tax? Uh, let's say on $500,000 home in Halifax. So I think it's, what do we say, like 1%? 1 so 1% 500,000 would be about 5,000-ish Yeah, I would, I would say that's accurate. I mean, it does depend on where you live, like mm -hmm. if you're in what town you're in, if you're in the city or downtown, but on average, that's probably accurate. Yeah, give or take a little bit. Mm -hmm. The next question doesn't really apply to us, but we'll read it out anyway. The one thing you wished you knew about Halifax before in Nova Scotia, before you moved. We actually were born here and we lived here our whole lives, so I guess yeah. we've chosen to stay here. <laughs> That's a hard one to yeah. answer. Uh, I would imagine that most people moving here now w would be shocked at how small it can feel mm -hmm. and how often you're going to see people that you recognize on the street. Not saying they're your friends or your family, I just mean you're going to see the same people and what, like how great the community feels. Yes, and the other thing I would say maybe on the more negative side is I feel like a lot of people move here from like Toronto and they expect everything to be way cheaper. It's not. It's not. <laughs> is Dartmouth similar to Halifax or do both cities have a separate vibe? By the way, they're not separate cities. They used to be a yeah. long, long time ago, but now it's one big municipality. So they're just, I guess, different areas of HRM. They have very different vibes, like entirely different vibes. The closest relation between the two, I would say, is the downtown core of Dartmouth and the north end in Halifax. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly just, again, back to that neighborhood feel. Good every, restaurants. Good restaurants. And, uh, bars, breweries, that kind yeah, of thing. Graffiti. It's, yeah. it's, it's a cool place. But in general, no. I mean, it's very different on the Halifax side versus Dartmouth. It's not saying one is better than the other. They're just kind of separate. Yeah, I would say areas of Dartmouth have more of a suburban feel mm -hmm. than if you're in downtown or like the peninsula Halifax. Yeah, the peninsula in general feels a lot different than the rest of HRM and HRM, Halifax Regional Municipality, is very, very big. <laughs> wow, check out this uh, cannon. I wonder if this is the noon gun. I have no idea, but they do uh, shoot off a cannon, not actually a cannonball, just like no. gunpowder, at noon every day. It's quite startling <laughs> if you're not prepared for it, but yeah, it's really, really, really fun. All right. Well, next question. Next question is, um, is Halifax or the province changing with so many new CFAs, which means come from a ways, moving in? Is the city losing its unique small town or small city charms? So just to say the CFA thing, there's something... Sounds kind of, it is kind of a negative thing that people, some people, not everybody, refer to people that were not born here as CFAs. And I've heard people that have lived here for 30 years say they're still referred to as that. And can we just stop doing that? Yeah, we don't need to say that. Uh, in general, I would say this city has become even better. Honestly, yeah. uh, I love it. I love we're, everything that's happening We're not here. people that are going to get upset about people moving in, new people Never. bringing great stuff to the city. We like new people coming. Yes. But, so yeah, there, I'm sure there'll be some negative comments <laughs> below, but just ignore them. Next question, please. All right. What direct international flights from Halifax did you guys have before COVID? We actually had quite a few, and quite I really few. hope they come back, and it doesn't take years to get them back. Hope so. I mean, we had back like ten years. Now. We had one that went to London uh, regularly, regularly every week. And speaking of that, it's really quick to get there from here in Halifax. It's only about a four and a half hour to five hour flight. That's hard to believe, and it's the same if you're going to the Caribbean, depending where, of course. So we're in a yeah. good location. But most flights are seasonal or were yeah. seasonal. So in the summertime, in the high season, you'd have like London, Glasgow, uh, Dublin, Munich. Paris, Munich, yeah. Frankfurt, and then the winter time would be with the Caribbean, uh, the Mexico, Caribbean and Mexico. Kind of we're in really good location. Last of these types of questions, my partner and I would love to move to Nova Scotia and especially to Halifax. Can you tell us something about the neighborhoods and what it would be like to live there? Hmm. So that's an interesting question. We started to film a series on this exact thing. We mm -hmm. did manage to get one video out on downtown, downtown mm -hmm. but then the lockdown happened again. So. so we do plan on doing at least three more videos about various neighborhoods in the on the peninsula. Yeah, yeah. So if you get a chance, go back and watch that video. Maybe we'll link to it here. Uh, but we will be putting out more specific videos on that as soon as the city kind of opens back up and we can mm -hmm. just go yep. visit the yep. areas. So if you've tuned out because you're not moving to Nova Scotia, <laughs> you can tune back in again. We've got some fun <laughs> questions coming up. First, let's show them your mug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone asked us in a previous video where we got these. They were given to us by Tourism Nova Scotia. It's by Yeti. Yeah. I tried to find them online and I don't know where you can buy them at. I'm sorry. <laughs> also, right now, if you're wondering what's happening, we are sitting down uh, having a picnic on the side of Citadel Hill. Because mm -hmm. what else are we going to do? We're in lockdown. Yeah, this is something we do uh, <laughs> on a lot of days. Yep. 
All right, next question. Next question. What is one thing my family needs to do, and needs is in caps, of this summer, but we don't know it exists in Nova Scotia? So, Ooh. this is such a hard question. Well, there's some things like, I, I can't name one specifically, but did you know we have tons of waterfalls? Yes, there's loads and loads of waterfalls everywhere. We haven't seen nearly enough of them. Hopefully this summer we'll get to do some more of that. Yeah. But there was one day in particular, we did do a, a video of this. Yep maybe over a couple of videos actually, where we went and stayed in Cape Breton in Dingwall, like sort of the very, very north of the Cabot Trail. Yeah, that's such a good day. So we stayed in domes. We stayed at Blue Bayou specifically, and right up the road from that, so sorry, at Blue Bayou, we stayed in these high-end domes. There was a lake there, we could go kayaking. Two minutes up the road by car, there is one of the best beaches in the province. It's amazing. Yeah, the and then close to that was White Point, was which White looks like Point, Scotland. White Point, which is beautiful, and we'd never heard of any of these places before, and it was uh, yeah. my, seriously one of my favorite days. Oh yeah, so I would say that is what you should do, and if you just want to do one specific thing, Chimney Corner, that's yeah. beach. Yeah. Are there any fun events or festivals all year, or mostly in the summer? I mean, a lot are in the summertime, but mm -hmm. in the winter, so non-COVID times basically, um, in the winter I'd say there's more like food centric ones like yep. there's a craft beer week and a bunch of other kind of more foody stuff but just definitely stuff that happens all year round but in the summer obviously there's lots of great yeah specifically busters. in the city like here in Halifax I feel like in normal times it's almost hard to even rem remember normal times there's events all constantly the like every week a few times a week yeah can you speak to live music in Halifax any hip spots in normal times of course um, I mean, Halifax does not have, if you're moving here for the music scene or coming to visit for the music scene, it's not so great. It used to be better. Um, there used to be more venues, that's what I mean by that. It's not that the bands that are here now aren't any good. I mean, mm -hmm. they absolutely are. It's just there's not a lot of places to play. A lot of them closed. Yeah, and I'm specifically speaking to normal times, not COVID times. I mean, we used to get festivals right here in this field um, called Somersault. Shout out to, I wonder if anyone remembers that a long time ago. But this field, um, what do they call this? Is this Garrison Grounds? It's Garrison Yeah, so this would hold a lot. But as far as small venues go... There's you know, still a few. There's like the Carlton... The Seahorse. Is it well the marquee? Yeah, the marquee. Let's call it the marquee. Thing. Whatever's underneath the um, the economy shoe shop. I think it's re rebranding, mm -hmm, it has a but name. I think they uh, those bands that play there. Yeah, yeah. So there's a few, but honestly, for a city of this size, there's not enough, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Are people in Nova Scotia as nice as both of you? Ah, <laughs> no. Come on now. <laughs> I would say yes. Pe yes. Most people are very, very nice, very, very friendly, and I know I've said this in videos before, but for uh, when tourists could actually come to the city and hopefully they can come back again soon. You might be walking downtown looking at your phone or a map and don't be surprised if someone stops you and asks you if you need yeah, directions. Someone will try to help. Um, the people in this city and in the province are extremely friendly. <laughs> Every time we, we're away for a while and then we come back to Canada, it's just we're always a little bit like, whoa, mm -hmm. everybody just wants to help everybody all the yeah. time and then say sorry if they don't. <laughs> what is your favorite hidden gem in Nova Scotia? Oh, there's probably, there's so many. I mean, some people would say, well, Carter's Beach used to be a hidden gem. Not now. Everyone knows about it. Yeah. That's the thing. I think most people know about everything. But if I had to pick one, because I grew up not too far from it, and I didn't even know it was there, Chimney Corner. And I feel like most people we mentioned it to don't know, unless you're from Cape Breton and really know the beach is there. Yeah, and when I say Chimney Corner, it, just, it sounds like just two random words. It's a beach, and it's a beautiful beach. Uh, in fact, it's one of the nicest beaches we've ever seen anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of something that you'd see in Croatia or on Crete in Greece. It's just the way the rock structures yeah. are in the, in the sand. And the water is warm. The water is so warm on that side, on the western side. Right, I guess some, one thing we didn't say when we were talking about the, the temperature of the water in Nova Scotia mm -hmm. is that along that uh, western shore I guess you I yep. know, north shore western shore like that side of Nova Scotia the straight, facing yeah. PEI mm -hmm. the water's really warm all right it's the last question if you got this far thanks for staying with us <laughs> we're trying to answer everyone pretty much <laughs> uh, what would your ideal scenic Nova Scotia road trip look like well that depends again how much time you have on your hands mm -hmm. if you have quite a bit of time no question Cabot Trail yes it's the one of the best road trips Stunning. in the world. Stunning. There's a reason why Cape Breton gets voted like the number one island in the world 
quite often and it's it's just amazing that trail from what we've never been to like the Scottish Highlands but a lot of people say it's quite like that it's just huge mountains and you're on the ocean the whole time now that's if you have a little bit of time on your hands I would say if you want a quick trip yeah, yeah. what would you say so if well, you're like the eastern shore from here is really nice is beautiful. And you'll be along the water and same thing going to the south shore like if you're in Halifax yeah. and you just have a few hours or something like that you can find some beautiful mm -hmm. like go to Peggy's Cove yeah it's just quick to get to the ocean and then you're just on the ocean the whole time as you drive around it's it's great we try to do as much as we possibly can. Whew, that was long and a whole lot of questions. Yeah, it was a marathon of questions. Again, if we didn't get to your questions, apologies. We did mm -hmm. our best, but some were a little bit too specific. Yeah. Some were easily things that you could find out in one one simple Google <laughs> search. So just stuff like that. We skipped over. Again, it was a very long, I'm sure this is a long video. Yeah, and mm -hmm. if you stuck with us so far and you're, and you're wondering, who are you? Again, I don't remember. Trevor, Anna, delightful travelers. We're usually traveling the world. We've been to close to 50 countries. Right now we're on lockdown here in Nova Scotia. Hopefully we'll be traveling again soon. So make sure to like the video, share it with your friends, leave us a comment uh, on your subscribe. favorite places oh, in oh, Nova yeah. Scotia to help others. Yes, and subscribe. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Yeah, so <laughs> again, we will see you guys in the next video. All right, guys. That's it. From Halifax, Nova Scotia, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.